Hey guys, uh, welcome to Question Time with Dr. Dex. Uh, we've been putting out on our Instagram site uh, to give us questions that we can answer on our YouTube page uh, so that we're not const construed or limited on time because uh, everybody knows Instagram, you're only limited to a one minute and question and answers or whatever video. So here we go. First comment is from CM Boost and he says, heck yeah, subscribed. So thank you, CM Boost. Chris, I really appreciate your support. Thank you for the follow and the subscri subscribing to our channel. Also, um, don't forget to click the little bell icon and that'll give you notifications every time we crank out a new video. And we're trying to put out content five days a week. So um, maybe something new for every day for you guys to check out. So it's some, a commitment we've made. We're gonna see how long that lasts for and we'll uh, see how it goes from there. So all decked out 513 asks, how do you factor labor costs for curved decking? So there's a couple different ways you can do it. One is you can just factor in your time that you have involved in creating that curved deck board and put it into your estimate or your bid for your client. Once you start bending a lot of deck boards, you're gonna know you can crank out one per hour, two per hour, uh, one so many, however long it takes. So you, you know, if you charge a hundred bucks an hour, then, you know, and you have 10 deck boards to bend on that deck, you know, there's a thousand bucks there. Plus your materials, you know, if you're bending 20 footers, you got a hundred bucks a piece on those. So you're a couple grand into it. Now on the, on the grand scale of the entire project, if I nickel and dimed every client for every bent deck board that I made, I'd probably never obtain that job because I'd have $50,000 extra in labor and time and, and bending. So I usually don't charge a lot more for my bent deck boards, except I will charge a premium for a surface border. If I know I have to bend that border, I might charge another five bucks a foot, which doesn't really equate to the time I've spent, but I already have all the equipment. I have the experience. My wife, my son, or my employees can help me bend those boards. So uh, sometimes I charge, sometimes I don't. Usually if I'm bending hand railing, I charge. Uh, that's a completely different set of rules and time involved to make a uh, bent hand railing versus a bent deck board. Proficient Builders asks, is your business making a profit? Yes, or I'd be broke and out of business. But uh, I know why you asked that question. You're following our current build and we've been on it for a couple months. A couple things to remember, we got 12 inches of snow here. That cost us over a week of being off work. Also, I've had some, um, one of my employees had a bad um, health issue he had to deal with. So he was out for three weeks. Um, that slowed us down. And then the weather, uh, it rains a lot here in Washington, that slows us down. You've seen the waterproof bladders we do, and you can see why we do so many of them because it creates nice dry storage. So um, all that rain, it's just constantly pounding and beating us up. So um, plus some of the complexity of what I've been building has been really difficult and challenging even to me to figure out. Uh, Sometimes I sit for a minute and, and the guys just stare at me and uh, I'm just trying to figure out, okay, what's our next step? How do I do this? What am I doing? It's not the same every time. It's not like we can just calculate repetition on these type of builds. Each one's custom, each one's art. It's special. Uh, I don't duplicate myself too often. I might have similar aspects in a job, but each one has its own set of challenges. So to answer your question, at the minute, we're probably breaking even but I've packed everything else in the, in the project so that we're still creating a profit. Tata.Clark asks, the composites I have used in the past are hot on your bare feet. Are there certain products to use over others? Thanks. So something to remember Tata is that uh, cap composites are always gonna retain more heat than PVC decking will. So they're gonna stay hotter longer. PVC will dissipate heat rapidly, so it'll be cooler to the feet. Also, the color of the decking obviously is gonna make a difference. There's some technologies and some brands right now that are coming out with a heat reflective technology. Um, one in particular, I believe is called Moisture Shield. So you might wanna check them out for uh, the heat reflective technology. ASIC Building Products made by TimberTech is also a good selection, uh, but I can't guarantee it's not gonna burn your feet. Um, my best advice for you would be to wear shoes if you can't handle the heat. So good luck with that. Alicia Ford Error asks, 
What is the best way to clean your Azek deck? I recommend either using 30 seconds cleaner or Clorox Outdoors. They're both excellent for sticking to the PVC and uh, killing the mildew and the mold spore. A light scrubbing and then hose it off or you can use a light pressure washing. You don't want to use the concrete bit on your PVC deck. You'll just blow holes into it. So use something that's a light with a big fan in it to lightly brush away. It's always good to clean out the deck board cracks. In the, in the state I live in, Washington State, we get a lot of pine needles and gunk and pine cones and all kinds of stuff that uh, get trapped in between the deck board cracks. So it's always good once a year to clean all that stuff out. And then I use 30 seconds cleaner and I just spray it on. I, I have a big, large deck, so it's like 2,500 square feet. So I have a 15 gallon sprayer and I use a car battery on it and I just go to town and just spray all this stuff on and then I just do sections of the deck at a time, scrub it out if I have to, and then I hit it with a pressure washer. And that's how I clean my deck. So that seems to work pretty well. Brian Senny asks, which do you think is more labor, the crystal rails or Azek post sleeves and rails? Good question, not really comparable, um, but if I had to answer that, I think it depends on the complexity of the crystal rail install. Uh, when you're dealing with waterproof bladders and you're having to seal up all your holes, then the crystal rail install might take you a little bit longer than an Azek one. Once you have all the pods set, then the crystal rail goes pretty quick. You're just dropping glass and tightening things up and leveling it out. Um, when you're setting your Azek posts and stuff, the posts go in pretty fast, but then you're cutting in all your rails, assembling all your pickets, and then you install it as a unit. So I'd say probably Azek's quicker than crystal rail depending on the complexity of the crystal rail, because when I did it on my deck, it was pretty quick. So now I'm going to reply to some comments that I received today on a post and give you some answers to those as well. Go Hunt at 1969 says, looks great, truly a master. Thanks Rich, much appreciated. Go Stabila, go Stabila. Infinite Deck says, fire emoji, fire emoji, fire emoji. Thanks, Mark. Really appreciate it. Van Stralen.Nicolas says, Looking great, Doc. How do you finish the cut ends? Do you color match paint? Is there a specific paint you recommend? Okay, great question, uh, Van Stralen. Kind of sounds like Van Halen. There's two ways to finish, a couple different ways you can finish a fascia board on a deck. There's a lot of people out there that like to miter everything, and I get that, and it does look really clean. For the first six months, it looks amazing. I can't really guarantee the look after that six months. I don't care if you glue, pocket screw, um, Gorilla Glue, epoxy, whatever you're doing, whatever mojo you're sticking in there. I know there's people that are sold on it. That's awesome. You know, good job. Uh, me personally, I don't do a whole lot of miters. Sometimes you have to, and I do. Whenever I have to, I do. And I try to glue them and screw them and plug them. Cortex, Fast Master product called Cortex. Look it up. Uh, it's great for hiding screws. But a lot of times what I'm doing, instead of putting a miter into something, I butt joint a lot of my ends. Which leaves an exposed end of the deck. And everybody hates that. So what I did was I go to Home Depot. I buy the little tiny samplers for four bucks. I take a piece of decking. I slap it down on the counter. And I say match that paint to this deck board the best you can. Um, on the Azek building products, you can like flip the board on its edge and the, ed the edges are not grain. They don't have the surface grain in them, so they're really easy to match. Sometimes we flip the board over. If the color's close enough, hey, do the back of the board. But they'll take some samples on the computer. I go to the tool corral and hang out and um, you know channel my inner Kiefer toolaholic. And then after a minute, I'll go back and they'll have my little $4 color match paint sample that lasts six months um, that I throw in the job site trailer or we get so many of them sometimes I just put them in a bucket and then I bring them to work as I need them. I just write down on the top of it with a Sharpie with the color and, and the brand and then uh, when I need that color and brand I'll bring it to work, shake the heck out of it, stir it up real good and then we can use it on end grains. So I paint match my end grains. I am working on a couple other techniques uh, to actually blend the end grain onto the flat side of the board kind of like formica but um i'm not quite there with it and it's a lot of work so for now we're just painting the end grains now i can go back on that deck in five years and that end grain will still be tight 
And that's why I do that instead of miters. Oh, specific paint. Um, you're kind of limited on the types of paint. I've actually gone to Sherwin-Williams as well and had them color match, but they were making me buy gallons. So that was expensive. You know, you spend 30 bucks a gallon for that stuff. Um, I'd rather spend $4 at Home Depot. It's an acrylic paint, lasts for five, six years. You can even leave it with the client and go, hey, you know, in six years, five, six years, you might need to touch these up. Or call me, I'll still be in business, right? Jose underscore Reyes, do you add anything to hide the corner joints on the stairs? Uh, see previous comment. So Mark underscore leg no says, nice job guys, I follow you from France. So thank you very much, Mark. That means a lot to me that there's people all around the world that follow us and leave comments and please keep them coming. Um, bring them in on Instagram, bring them in through YouTube. We try to reply to everyone. I know someday that won't be a reality, but for now, um, I do my best. Okay, so keep them coming. GeoGreg308 asks, how long does a project like this normally take? I looked back on your feed and you posted a picture of the support holes being dug on December 27th. In my ignorance, that seems like a long time for a single deck. Do you have other smaller projects within that time to help pay the bills for such a long build like this one? Uh, I scheduled eight weeks for this build, but we had uh, 12 inches of snow. Uh, one of my employees got sick and had a couple other complications and holdups. So unfortunately, we're probably gonna be about 10 weeks total into this build. Now a couple weeks have gone in between there. I was at the International Builder Show. I'm heading out of town next week as well. So um, it is what it is. But uh, we're, so we're a couple weeks behind schedule right now. But uh, originally eight weeks. Okay, so proper construction asks, what do you charge for your designs and how do you go about it? Um, in the past, I never was charging for my designs until I got to the point where I was 30 designs deep uh, during the summer and I couldn't get anybody's bids done because I was spending 12 hours on a free design. Well, that had to stop. So now what I do is I will charge hourly to my clients for a design with a certain minimum. If it's an easy design, it's a four hour minimum. If it's a moderate design, it's a six hour minimum. And a complex design, there's no minimum. I, I could spend 12 hours on it. Um, and I usually have a set fee per hour. Whatever your hourly drafting time is, you know, just bill people for it. I've been stiffed a couple times, but most, most people will pay when they realize the energy and efforts that you're putting forth to show them the most amazing, beautiful deck that they'll ever see. So that's my opinion on that.